Hi, hello everyone, welcome to this session of our course, um, Appreciating Linguistics or Typological Approach. Now since we got to know how syntax is going to help us and then uh, how we can deploy it as a, as a tool to, uh, to figure out or to understand um, how similar looking sentences might be different and different looking sentences might actually have similar theory underlying structure. So, um, in, the, in the coming sessions I am going to talk about it more, but now let us focus on some, um, some like discipline specific jargons or syntax specific jargons that you should know um, as, as a linguist. Those who have already had some courses in syntax or introduction to linguistics, you must have been familiar with such terminologies, but if you are new to linguistics and you are trying to understand what this discipline is, then this is for you. So, very simple terms and very simple or the very basic things that uh, syntax deals with. And um, I would like you to know uh, or, or I would like you to um, have a look at this picture that I have drawn um, here. Uh, Let us look at this. There are two terms. I must focus on one is deep structure and the other one is surface structure. Okay. So, these are the two very important things that you need to keep in mind when you are trying to understand syntax. Okay. So, what are these? literal if you look at the literal meaning deep structure which is there deep inside and surface structure which is floating which is superficial or which you can actually see. Something that you can see is the surface something that you cannot see, but it is there it is very much there is the deep structure or, or like the, the deepness, but these are the literal meanings and uh, in linguistics also um, it stands true up to a certain extent. Um, I would uh, uh, I would like to draw your attention on two constructions. One is uh, let us say John um, hit Peter. Okay. Then the second sentence I am writing Peter was hit by John. Okay. We will come back to these two sentences la later. Now first let me uh, talk about some, um, some basic concepts uh, which are uh, related to these terms like deep and surface structure. Okay. So, um, what is it? Uh, now, look at this diagram that I have drawn here. Here I have written D structure, D structure means deep structure. Then I have written here transformation. And after transformation, I have written here S structure that means the surface structure. Then the surface structure uh, has, has been or has been split into two branches. Here I have written P F and here I have written L F. So, P F is the, fun, is the phonetic form and L F is the logical form. So, this actually um, this looks like this. This is called inverted y model does not it look like that inverted y. So, here you have deep structure here you have p f and l f somewhere here is surface structure. So, this is basically this and then this is the elaborated um, diagram. So, what happens first any like when you speak a particular or when you when you utter a particular construction or grammatically correct sentence what you hear that is primarily the surface structure and to arrive at that surface a lot of other operations must have happened at the deep structure level. Did I make sense could you understand? So, what I am saying all these sentences that you that you use or all the constructions that you use in your day to day life what you hear that is primarily the surface structure. And this surface structure is the is sometimes not always sometimes the deep structure and the surface structure is the same. Uh, so, sometimes this surface structure is the transformed 
version of another um, another let us say um, another form or you can say is another is the transformed version of another another construction right. So, to arrive at the surface structure sometimes you need to go through certain transformational like certain transformation rules. So, it is like you start with a uh, if I can give some kind of an analogy you start it with a straight line and then you do some designing and after like the end of the uh, end of the operation you do not see that uh, that straight line anymore or you do not see that straight line as a straight line rather it has become a, a, a specific design it has become a pattern. So, to become that pattern or to become that beautiful design it must have gone through a set of transformation rules right. So, that is the difference between the deep structure and then the surface structure and once you you arrive at the surface structure it will have two different components and what is the first component? The first component is the sound component and the second component is the grammatical component. So, the sound component would be p f which is also known as phonetic form in linguistics. The other one or the other component would be l f which is known as the logical form ok. So, or the or you can call it how you are going to arrange it in a logical fashion. So, that when you when you hear that when the speaker hears it um, it should sound meaningful to him or her. So, that means this particular construction should not sound like a weird construction. So, I would if you can visualize so just imagine the stacking of the cards right. So, you are trying to build a house and you are keeping the cards one by one first what you did you put together all the cards all the cards that you that you have in hand let us say you have 10 cards you have put all of them together. So, that is the first process look at what is written here putting together and after you put it together the next task is to arrange it to organize it in such a way that it would have a potential to be considered as a meaningful construction. So, then the second thing that you did you arranged it. So, the arrangement is the sec, uh, is the second process and what is the third process? The third process is generation or generating or, or generating constructions. So, you might generate it using certain transformational rules or you can simply um, you, you like the deep structure does not really go through any transformation yet it arrives at the surface structure. In that case these are the declarative sentences and the like I am Anindita. So, I am Anindita uh, that is like the deep structure in the surface structure that is going to remain the same it does not go through any transformational rules or any transformation rules right. So, this is how it should look like. So, that is the that is the skeleton of syntax or that is the skeleton of the entire analysis that sentence or that syntax is going to propose. So, remember it is like the the pack of cards that you have in hand you are going to put it together you are going to arrange it then you are making it flat. So, it is like you kept it one by one like one after another and now you have 10 different phrases and you have you have made a design and after this design is made you made them flat. So, when you made them flat it became a full sentence and that is the sentence or that is the surface structure that you heard or that you that you use or you utter or you hear in the day to day discourse and it will have a p f component and it will have a, a have an l f component right. So, with uh, I, I hope this is un, uh, this is kind of clear to you we will come back to it this is not everything about deep structure or surface structure especially when you are trying to understand syntactic typology. So, um, that would be so this is called theory underlying structure or the theory underlying level. So, below like underneath the surface level you will have a deep level or you will have a deep structure clear and uh, um, this would this can be easily explained with a construction like this. So, let us look at uh, uh, sorry um, let us look at this construction um, when I when I ask you to um, look at this construction uh, here I have written uh, the first sentence which is an active construction traditionally in in traditional uh, grammar or in prescriptive grammar you are going to call it active sentence. So, John hit Peter. 
So, who is the who is the person who has done the action that is John and who has been the uh, been the victim that is Peter. So, uh, what is the meaning John is the one who has undertook like who has done the action and this action has been uh, has been done on Peter there is another person. So, there is a there is an agent who has done this action there is a patient who has undergone this action right. So, this meaning John hitting um, Peter can also be explained by a passive construction like Peter was hit by John what is the meaning it is the same the meaning is same that uh, Peter has been the victim or Peter has been the patient and John is the doer of the action. So, the action of hitting has been done by John. So, if you now let us see how syntax helps us to identify the similarity and the differences in this sentences in these two sentences. So, when you say um, let us let us go back. So, when you say John hit Peter the meaning is John agent Peter is the patient Peter has gone through the process and John is the one who did the work. In case of Peter was hit by John the same meaning John is the one who did the work and Peter is, Peter is the one who underwent it. So, now uh, let us come back to this rule uh, that that I, I or this information that I wrote about syntax. It said syntax or syntactic analysis can actually help you to understand how different looking sentences can be related. So, do not you think this is exactly the same thing happening here the active construction John hit Peter and the passive construction Peter was hit by John primarily it says the sentences they look different, but the uh, but there is a there is a very close relation between these two at some level maybe at the deep structure level on the surface they are looking different, but at the deep structure or, or the underlying structure that remains same uh, for both of them. So, what should be our concern here is not it surprising right. So, uh, they look so different one is active the other one is passive grammatically also there are more number of words in the second sentence less number of or fewer number of words in the first sentence yet structurally they are the same or the or at some level at the theory underlying level that is the same. So, what should be our aim here? So, we should uh, we should aim at something or kind of grammar that must be capable of showing how a single underlying abstract representation can become different surface structures. So, that should be the crux of the story that should be your take home. The take home is that we should develop or we should deploy such a grammar which which must have the ability and what ability to show that a single underlying abstract representation can actually become different surface structure. So, the underlying structure remains same from one underlying structure you can actually create or you can you can arrive at different surface structures. If you are able to do that your your uh, your grammar is is self sufficient like your grammar uh, is is an effective one which uh, which can actually an, uh, which can actually accommodate data from uh, many different languages. So, then only this theory would be considered as a robust theory and syntax actually does that. So, the syntactic theories are are uh, robust enough to accommodate uh, like a lot of data given in different languages. So, the, the, the proposition here is that or the argument here is that the, uh, the on the surface the uh, structures might be different it might look different for English different for Latin or different for let us say Greek or Hindi or Urdu or Bangla it might look different but the theory underlying structure the abstract representation that remains same. And out of that same abstract representation we do derive or we do generate different surface structures and this is a truth or this stands true for, um, for most of the world's languages right. So, we are going to talk about it 
in detail later. So, I my intention for today's session is just to give you an idea how the deep structure and the surface structure um, they work in syntax. So, in a construction like I am Anindita, deep structure and surface structure they are same. In a construction like what is your name, the deep structure might be different, surface structure might be different or, um, or a construction like are you Anindita. So, in that case also considering it is a question, considering it is an interrogative sentence, it has gone through certain transformations to arrive at, at the surface structure which is are you an indita ok. Yeah. So, that is about deep structure and surface structure in um, linguistics ok. So, uh, now our task is to find out what other work can syntax do, it can definitely help us to identify how similar looking sentences are actually different and how different looking sentences are actually similar. Does it or, or, or does it have any other ability to help us in any other um, in any other domain or in, 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 in any other function. So, the other thing that it might help or syntax might help us to uh, clarify is structural ambiguity. So, this is one way by which um, syntax can help us or syntactic analysis can help us um, and then we got to know what is deep structure and what is surface structure uh, which are the this discipline specific jargons and now is the time to understand how um, this analysis or syntactic analysis can help us to, um, to identify uh, structural ambiguity and how to how to sort of simplify it right. Um, considering we have uh, uh, we have constructions which are ambiguous which are um, which are which might have multiple meanings. I will give you an example let us say I um, uh, maybe um, I saw a uh, I saw a, a, a star uh, or I saw my friend with with uh, with an umbrella or uh, yeah. So, when you say uh, I saw my friend with an umbrella, um, do not you think this is uh, this is kind of uh, kind of uh, a construction which might have two different interpretations or two different meanings. Maybe I will give you another um, another very interesting example in that sense. Um, Let us say the construction here would be uh, I or, or John shot the elephant um, yeah this is also another example from Yule's book uh, the study of uh, language um, in, in, in pajamas in pajamas. It is a very funny construction actually. So, when you say let us consider the second example, John shot the elephant in the in the pajamas uh, in pajamas. So, in this kind of a construction my question would be when you hear this sentence for the first time do not you think oh yeah who was wearing actually the pajamas whether John was wearing it while he was shooting the elephant or the elephant were, uh, was wearing it when John was shooting it. So, what should be um, or when John shot it? So, what should be um, who 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 uh, do the pajamas belong to whether whether they belong to John or they belong to um, the elephant. It is a little tricky it is it is actually clumsy it is a little ambiguous to think about it um, from this angle like uh, it does have semantic ambiguity and then whether it has a structural ambiguity or not that we, we are going to check it later like check it in a while by deploying the syntactic analysis or, or the grammar or the proposed analysis that, that we are going to discuss. 
Similar is the case with the first construction, I saw my friend with an umbrella. So, that means who was holding the umbrella? You, you were holding, an, uh, holding the umbrella, then you saw your friend or, uh, or maybe I can, I can even make it more interesting. I saw my uh, friend while opening an umbrella, while opening an umbrella. So, who was opening the umbrella? So, whether I was opening the umbrella and I saw my friend or my friend was opening an umbrella when I saw him. So, these kind of constructions, these are called ambiguous constructions. They have both structural as well as semantic ambiguity. So, in this case, the uh, this might have two distinct underlying interpretations at the deep structure level. On the surface structure, the ambiguity comes, but the ambiguity is not there at the deep structure level, right. So, in the uh, at the deep structure, it would be very clear. So, whether this is while opening an umbrella belongs to who? If there is a phrase uh, which is the subject that is I and there is a there is a verb which is uh, saw and then my friend which is another NP, then while opening an umbrella, so that is that generally it is considered as an adverb, it is a, it's a temporal, it is a time uh, adverb. So, in this case when you think about it from the deep structure perspective, then the structure like the ambiguity is not there, that there would be two different distinct or instead of different I would rather use the term distinct. So, in such structurally ambiguous constructions, they would have two distinct underlying interpretations, right. However, when it comes to the surface structure level, it becomes uh, it becomes clumsy or it, it does have different meanings. Um, so, uh, there could be other constructions like uh, um, small boys and girls, okay, I am going to write it here, um, small boys and girls. Okay. So, when you say small boys and girls, in this case also um, it is it's confusing, right. Whether small boys is one unit, then and is the conjunction, then there is girls. This could be one representation or it could be small is the adjective which is modifying boys and girls, this could be the other representation and this anyway remains the conjunction. So, this conjunction is like this, this is between boys and girls and small is identifying boys and girls as a unit or small is modifying boys and girls as a unit or small boys is a separate unit, girls is a separate unit and then they are joined together um, with the help of a conjunction. So, this confusion can be clarified or can be clear at the deep structure, but definitely not at the surface structure. So, if you if you just look at the surface structure level, then there is a there is a confusion, but if you go back if you try to dig deep into it, then you would see that oh yes these are actually this there are two distinct constructions, there are two distinct representations, there are two distinct underlying representations, which is why you should not have any ambiguity associated with it. So, now the concern is considering these constructions are structurally ambiguous, we must have an analysis or our syntactic analysis must have the ability of showing the structural distinction between the underlying representation. So, this is what is important. So, why uh, syntactic analysis or what kind of contribution syntactic analysis will make here? Syntactic analysis, so I am writing it over here. So, um, syntactic analysis, um, let us say must have to be capable of um, let us say showing 
structural distinctions between um, structural distinctions between the underlying representations. Okay? This is also another important function of syntax. This is something that you need to keep in mind when you are thinking about structural ambiguity. Okay? So, um, here also the same thing I saw, so, I is one like that is the subject and saw so is the verb, my friend while opening an umbrella is going to be one unit. Otherwise, it can also be I saw my friend while opening an umbrella is going to be I while opening an umbrella saw my friend that can also be there. So, this particular structure will have two different deep structure representations. Since our analysis has the ability to identify these distinctness, it would be uh, it would be considered as a robust theory. So, syntax will have multiple function to play or syntax will have a lot of other, um, other important functions which helps us to understand human language better or, or the constructions in different worlds uh, in different languages of the world in a better manner. So, not only the structural ambiguity, it also helps us to identify the theory underlying structure of the languages. Um, in the words, uh, sorry, in the sentences, and it does give us an idea that how similar looking constructions might be different um, at the theoretical level, at the underlying level, and different looking constructions might also be, um, might also have some close tie or might also have some close relation if you try to dig a little deep into it. Okay? So, these are two primary importance or these are the two prime most important things you need to understand about syntax. Then the third one that I want to emphasize on as far as uh, um, the importance of syntactic analysis is concerned is recursion. Recursion is a is an important uh, very fascinating very interesting phenomenon in uh, natural language. So, what is the literal meaning of recursion? Recursion means you are actually able to generate a sentence generate a long sentence by stacking many of the uh, many of the phrases together. Okay? This is one of the very crucial property of grammar and what kind of grammar descriptive grammar or you can say the analysis the syntactic analysis that we are uh, we are we are using. So, primarily uh, the meaning or the literal meaning or the etymological meaning of recursion is repeatable any number of times. Okay. So, that means, you are using certain phrases which can be repeated any number of times. Okay. There should be no problem. Think about a construction like uh, let us say John thinks that Mary believes that Peter feels that uh, let us say Susan is a good student. So, look at this construction such a long construction and what has happened here stacking of the phrases John thinks that one phrase Mary believes that one set Peter feels that one set Susan is a good student this way you can think or that Susan is a good student who feels Peter feels that Peter feels that Susan is a good student who believes Mary believes that Mary believes that Peter feels that Susan is a good student who thinks that John thinks. So, this is also uh, one very crucial phenomenon which can be nicely explained by deploying syntactic analysis. So, this property of language or this, this, this is available in 
in most of the world's languages, if not all. So, recursion may not be available in certain uh, world's languages, we will talk about it later, but then in many of the uh, world's languages you, sh you would encounter constructions like this. So, our analysis or the syntactic analysis that we are going to discuss should also have the ability to capture such sentences and they should be able to uh, account for um, these kind of long constructions. So, then only this thesis oh sorry this analysis will be considered as a robust analysis. Okay. So, how what is the essence of it? What is what should we understand or what should we take home? We must propose an analysis or we must or the kind of analysis which we are going to discuss. So, who I will talk about a talk about a bit of history of syntax in the next session, but as of now Chomsky's proposal about uh, syntax like syn, uh, syntax as a as a whole or syntactic analysis as a whole it should this kind of a grammar or this kind of generative ability of the grammar should have uh, the ability to help us in these directions or in these domains. It should help us to remove or to understand the distinct deep structure representation of ambiguous constructions. It should help us to find out how the recursion can be accounted for. It should also help us to identify or to, or to let us know or to find out how the deep structure and the surface structures they, they are different and then the sentences which are looking similar might be different in uh, different theory underlying at the theory underlying level and the sentences which look different might be uh, or might share a close relation at the theory underlying level. So, the, the considering syntactic analysis has the ability of, of um, explaining or uh, has the ability to account for all these functions that I have discussed it is one of the most robust theories of the contemporary time or of the modern days and we will talk about the history of it a bit and then eventually we will move to syntactic typology. So, that is for the day and then we will uh, discuss more about deep structure, surface structure, recursion, ambiguity, we will also talk about what are the fresh structure rules and maybe some basics of advanced syntax and eventually we will move to typological approach of syntax. Thank you.